got my web application here that I want to transfer to Python anywhere so I can get someone to trial it. Just show you what it does right here and we can check that it works. This is a very simple one. It does connect to my local database and get some data and displays it. And if we go and look at the application itself, you can see how straightforward it is. It's just a single route with an index, select staff and table students and drops it straight into my template, which does extend a layout.html, some nice bootstrappy stuff. So we've got to get this into Python anywhere. Quite a few little steps to do with this. I guess the first one is you need to make a Python Anywhere account. And here's my Python Anywhere account. Um, I need to make a website first. So I go into web, add a new web app and it's going to be charliesmith.pythonanywhere.com and it's going to be a flask one 3.7 why not i think that's what we're using at the moment 3.6 3.7 doesn't make any difference really flask app.py uh yep that'll do so just defaults all the way here and what this should give me is a folder with um not much in it so that would be my database here does actually work there's not much point in looking at it uh, actually let's just have a quick look click on that yeah th there's a file they've given us a default file it's no good to us really yet so let's go and upload our website so what I'm going to do I'm going to go into the my site folder that was just created and I'm going to upload a file here so I do that by I've forgotten how I do that Upload a file, big button. Now that file does not yet exist. Let's go and make it. This is the folder of the application I'm just working in. So you can see I've got my app.py, my templates and so on. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to send to compressed zipped folder. It's called an object.zip. I'm going to call it uh, my site.zip. It doesn't really matter. It's going to um, be unzipped anyway at the other end. So back into here, upload a file. I'm going to choose that same file. Luckily, it's gone exactly to the right place. That's nice. Open. Wait patiently a moment. Cool. I need to unzip that though. So I am going to open a bash console here. So it's just a place where I can do stuff. Uh, command line stuff. Waiting bicycle repairman. <laughs> and I am going to unzip. What did I call it? My site dot zip, was it? I think it was. Unzip my site dot zip. Tick tick boom. Done. Right. So I've now got, if I go back into my files, I go into my site, I've got those things. And I can safely delete my site dot zip. Super. Bunch more steps that we need to do to make this work. Um, where should we start? Let's look at a virtual environment first. So one of the things that we need is a, um, a virtual environment that contains the things that we need. So I'm going to go into my bash console again, and I'm going to run some magical stuff. So I'm in the my site folder already, which is good. And I'm going to, you know what I've got? I could just type this in or I could magically, oops, magically, wait for it, wait for it, control C, I can magically paste it. So that's going to make a virtual environment for me. And I think this bit just takes a moment while it does some stuff. So the virtual environment thing, in theory, you can um, have stuff running with different versions of Flask or different versions of other Python components. Um, we want to use PyMySQL, which I think is the main reason, otherwise we wouldn't need to, to do this. So you could actually use one of the other tools that's um, built in. Anyway, we're done? Still done? Cool, we are done. Uh, I'm going to say work on this virtual environment. Um, I actually made a virtual environment there called my-virtual-env, if you look up at the line above. So my work on my-virtual-env. Are we going to go into it? 
we are. We might have been already actually looking at it. Never mind, all good. And I'm going to do pip install. And I'm not 100% sure I need to do this. It's requirements.txt is the file that we that uh, says what needs to be in this um, this virtual environment. So it's it's grabbing things like the ginger um, application and what have we got? Markup safe and it's dangerous. Ooh, anyway, and the one that I also want to do is pip install my SQ, pi my SQL, pi my SQL. So that's the Python library that does the linking to um, MySQL. That's going well so far. Now, what else do we need to do? I'm going to go back into this web folder. So this website needs to use that virtual environment. So I need to enter a path to that virtual environment. And my path is I say slash home slash Charlie Smith. I did my username. Did I get that right? Charlie Smith slash and then uh, dot virtual ends virtual environments. Don't forget the dot slash and then the one that I made, which is called my dash virtual env and tick tick boom. Ah, it says I've got the wrong version 3.6. I when I copied and pasted that line, I had the wrong one. Uh, I think I can just get away with going back to 3.6 there. Yeah, so consistency is key. Uh, I think I've got to go in here and change this now. I've stuffed this up before. This is how I know this is what I need to do. And yay, I have a virtual environment that works. And uh, another thing that I need to do is fiddle with this WSGI configuration file. So at the moment, it's using their file that they created, which is called Flask App. And I'm going to say use app and save that. Now, back to files. This is the last step, I think. In my site, where I now have app.py and so on, this app.py does not link correctly to my database. That is, yeah, did I say I'd already imported the database? That's in that other video, yeah, database is over here. If we go and have a quick look in databases. It says here, use this database host address. That's my username. And it also says, it was imported as Charlie Smith Laptops. Laptops was the name of the database. So all of those things we're going to need to remember. So uh, I can't remember that very well. So I'm going to copy that and the other ones I've got to remember. So back into files and back to app.py. And so the host is not local host. It's that thing I just copied. The user is Charlie Smith. You will remember from the other video that it is the password I'm choosing to use is 13com 13com and the database is laptops but I need to put in front of it Charlie Smith dollar laptops we'll save that there's a good chance we're actually done here uh, I need to go back into web and I need to say reload Charlie Smith Python anywhere .com. I'm ready. Good. And if I open this in a new tab, there we go. CharlieSmith.PythonAnyway.com and I've got a working database linked to my online database and that will work anywhere in the world. How long did that take? Just under 10 minutes with a little bit of practice. So good luck. Um, and 